Entertainment Weekly. Uh, there she is. She plays Jimmy's co-star. Please welcome Susan Day. That cover. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I know you're gonna miss Jimmy. You're both leaving, though. Yeah, we are. Yeah, but I didn't know he was leaving until about two weeks ago. Um, did you read it or did he tell you? No, he told me. Yeah. He said, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all are going to bigger and better things. I, you know, you hope to go on to bigger and better things, mm -hmm. but that's not why I'm leaving. I'm just, uh... Tired? No, it's not that I'm tired. One of the reasons is that there's a definite threat with the track record that Grace has had that if I stay, it's very possible I may now have an affair with Douglas Brackman and Arnold Becker, <laughs> and Jonathan Rollins, and Kenzie, and even Markowitz. Um, but it's not because of being tired. It's because sometimes things are so secure, mm -hmm. they become frightening. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it going to be real hard find writing like that anyplace else? Aren't you kind of spoiled? <laughs> I think it's going to be difficult to, um, to find the complete unit again, absolutely. But I have to believe that somewhere out there that there are more talented writers and producers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big industry, and for any of us to think that it's just this one segment would be, um, you know, I'll go grow tulips somewhere then. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but the unit it was absolutely incredible. You think the amount of producers, the amount of writers, the amount of actors, and how everybody got along is absolutely unheard of, you know, in, on, in this town. It, it's a great unit, a, a great family. Are there any people there that you hang out with off stage that you'll see after this is over? I don't know. It's really interesting. In the beginning, we would try to get together. As a unit, you know, and go over and have dinner at people's houses and such. There was like nothing to talk about. <laughs> it's a different life. It's a whole different lifestyle. Yeah. It's uh, one is work oriented, and I guess because it takes up so much of your time, you know, that the rest of your time you're trying to break away from that. It's nice to miss them. Yeah. 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 I'll see them again. I know. You don't mind me going back to this picture for a minute because. It's, it's a nice picture of you and Jimmy, and um, most women would like to be in the place. Uh, He's ladies special. find him very sexy. He's yeah. special, yeah. yeah. Look at that now. Hit that hand. Look at that bottom hand. Is he tickling you? What, what is that there? <laughs> <laughs> what does your husband think of that picture? He hasn't seen it. Oh. <laughs> Actually, that's an optical illusion. That's mm -hmm. not his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the women? <laughs> you know Whose what you said? What you said about the over there? You know, with the bombs dropping and oh, yeah, making uh, love and having sex. Yeah. You know, well, from a you spoke from the male point of view. You yeah. know, the woman's point of view is that it would just be anticlimactic. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back with Susan Day. I think. Yeah, yeah. Will you miss all the suits that Grace wears? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I might be able to wear them in real life, given a year or two separation. I love those suits. That was her character. Yeah. That's, that's who Gracie is. And that's another reason that it's time to move on. It's because um, even you are saying, enough suits already. But that's who she is. And, and you know, you begin to ask the writers and you ask the producers to broaden this character. And then you become dishonest to the character. Yeah. So, you know, in order to avoid imitating myself, imitating who I know Grace to be, and, and or expanding her character in a very unnatural way, it's best to move on. Yeah. 
Do you absolutely hate like wearing those suits? Like, do you wear anything like that when you're out as Susan? Can't put them on. Can't put them on because it's Grace. It's so Grace. Yeah. Yeah. It's too much like the character. Cause, cause still to this day, my favorite picture is, and it's totally. Sometimes I think actors and actresses go out of their way to break the image. And I saw a picture of you. It's the coolest picture in a magazine with the red dress. Sandy, do, did you all find it? It's, it's something gents or something. Yes. Remember that picture? Oh yeah. I remember it well. <laughs> Get you yeah. away from the grace image, huh? That was away from the grace image. I mean, there's a lot of me that is away from the grace image. Um, but um, mainly, mainly it's, uh, it, it, part of that is, when you do a series for five years, and you live the character for five years, it is now time to break away and to absorb more of who you are and be able to place that into another character. Yeah. So if you could snap your fingers and be anywhere, what would you like to do next? Theater. Really? Back to the wood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, theater. Theater for a while. Motion pictures, because I, to get the 360 degree um, on a series, sometimes you, you, after five years, you know how they're going to edit. You're doing a scene, and you can see the, how they're going to edit, and everything is more of a 180 degree angle. In a motion picture, you have more of an arena to play to. Um, and maybe another series. I don't know. I have no expectations at all. People will look at me. Danny Aykroyd was here uh, last week, and he said, everyone directs eventually. Not me. Not me. Mm -mm. You have no desire. No. Um, I gave up. I spent so long giving up control. And so much of being a director is controlling the set. Um, I just, I don't see myself doing it at all. Yeah. Uh-uh. You want to do funny stuff? Sure. George yeah. Carlin's here. You like George Carlin? I love George Carlin. I know George Carlin. I know George. 1970, <laughs> 1970 something. Early 70s, 71 maybe it was. I was about 17, 18 years old, and I went to see him at the Troubadour. And he, he was our hero. He was a hero because those were troubled times. And this was a man that knew what was going on and was not afraid to talk about Cambodia, was not afraid to talk about what was going on in his country, but also make light of it. So it was OK to acknowledge what was happening. Bright, funny man. And I went to see him at the Troubadour. And then I went back to my house. I was living in Woodland Hills. And I didn't have my purse. And I freaked. My purse, my purse. I called the Troubadour, and they said, Oh, yeah, George has it. I said, George who? <laughs> George Carlin has it. And George gets on the phone, and he says, come on down tomorrow night and come pick it up. And I went down the, the next night before he went on, brought me into his dressing room, and he said, here's your purse. How are you? And I looked up at him, and I knew it was an omen. I said, I'm going to make it in this business. I've just met George Carlin. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I love him. Yeah. Well, he's coming out here a little later. Well, purse snatcher. <laughs> yeah. We all uh, wish you luck and thank you. And thanks for everything you've thank given you us. Thank you so on. much. Thank you. Susan Day. We'll be back with George Carlin.